So for the last seven years, we've been doing parties in this old arena, and it's time for an upgrade. So let's take a journey and build some new arenas. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. We're making our very first stop of the day. Forgive the road noise, but this is Tap Plastics. And uh, when you're going to build an arena, this is definitely a place you want to come. This is where I get my bulletproof glass that I'm going to use to make the walls and floor of my arena. So let's head inside and order some plastic. You can order stuff right to size and you'd be amazed at the selection of materials they have. It is very wide and abundant, but you need to make sure if you're looking to build a battle bot that you get bulletproof glass and not acrylic. They look nearly identical, but acrylic will shatter. You can take some time and rummage through the scrap bin to find some spares. So one of the reasons I really like tap plastics is the custom cutting. Uh, this arena is going to take a lot of different steps and a lot of building. And to get some of the uh, work out of the way to give me a jump start, I, I really appreciate it, which is one of the reasons I come here. All right. Lexan achieved. Next step is some wood. Now I have to admit, I like doing arena and lighting projects around November, December, because there's a lot more light options than normal. So I found my wood. Now I just need to go check out and find some lights. Hazard's done quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next step, we need to put a slot in our wood pieces. And I know a lot of you are like, he has a mill, why is he not using that? That's because this piece is too big. In fact, the long pieces are way too big to fit in my milling machine. Its x-axis only goes eight inches, and this is obviously bigger than that. I know a lot of fancy YouTube woodworking channels have a routing table, which is the proper tool to use, but I'm going to turn my drill press here into a router for me, and uh, let's see how this goes. Well, it's not that it's not working. Ta-da! Would a real router do this better? Yes. Do I have that? No. Okay, so after my horrible drill press experiment, uh, Rob informed me, and hey, everyone, here's Rob, his big introduction to the show. Hello, everyone. He's our 3D printing master and our machinist. And He's our everything every... master. Yeah, yeah. And he informed me he has a router, and it's apparently the right way to do what I'm trying to do. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so. we're kind of set up. We're about ready to do it. Awesome. So we've got our two frames for the arenas. They are marked, and it's time to get routing. Precision marking. He used a ruler and everything. So a big thank you to Rob and Weisscarver Machines for uh, fixing my wood mistake. He really made this look easy and cool. One of the big reasons we actually came down to Rob's place today is we made a bunch of models on SolidWorks, and he's 3D printing them for us on his Mark Forge printer. Uh, you can see it going right here, and I'm about to show you the amazing parts he made. All right, so we have all our 3D printed parts here from Weisscarver Machines. Big thank you to Rob for printing all of this for us. This was several days of printing. And for everyone curious, these were made on a Mark Forge printer using their Onyx material. They are very durable. I'm going to be doing five birthday parties a week with this arena. So I decided to go all out and print this in a very durable plastic. So up next, we have to get all the support material out. So if you'll notice, the object printed like this in this orientation, and if you look in here, there's all this extra material that's just like this thin stuff that's easy to twist and break out. It's supposed to be easy to twist and break out. They did not understand the assignment. And uh, this is called fill material. It's to make sure the part doesn't droop as it prints. Uh, Droopy the robot, good. Droopy on a print. Bad. bad. 
All right. I fell over. So, uh, next thing I did was I took some standard deck screws and I went ahead and I placed two in each corner of my wood frame. Uh, I didn't bother recording this because you've probably seen a million different woodworking channels put together a little window box frame. Is this like a hula hoop? No, no, this is a robot arena. And we have all of our little trenches. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with LED strips and then solder them all together. I did one already when I did the center strip and I really didn't actually like the way it looked. It looked a lot, I think it'll look a lot better with just the perimeter. So that's what I'm gonna do on this frame. All right, so it even comes with this cool little remote. No, wrong color! Yeah. All right, so next up, we're gonna put the LED strands in. If you look really carefully, you'll see these little sections where it's got copper and a cut line. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're gonna stretch this along where I wanna put it. We're gonna see where the nearest cut line is. So if I set that there, uh, I think that is our winner. And so we're going to then take our scissors and carefully go snippity doodad. And we have cut that. What if you do it without snippity doodad? Mm. I don't recommend trying to pull it apart. Snippity doodad does work well. But what if you don't say snippity doodad? Well, then you failed as a person. <laughs> so we're going to take our super sticky LEDs now and lay it in this trench. <laughs> uh, try to clean the surface before you do this. Um, don't do it like me, kids. Do it better. And then we just push it down. Just keep pushing, just keep pushing, just keep pushing. Right. And I've already made a little notch here with my Dremel tool for the wires to come out. Do, 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 Oh, God, do, Diana's do, here. Do, 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 do. Okay, hello, Builder Blog. Next up is the ever fun step of soldering little tiny wires onto little tiny pads. No! More! Tiny! Wires! <laughs> so, I am uh, cutting them to length. Oh, no! And then I'm stripping them. Ooh. And then split them. This is a family show, Zach. Oh, yeah. And now we tin them. What's tinning? It's where you add a little bit of solder to the wire. And then we can bend it down. Bend it like Beckham? Yeah, that one. Their hands are in the way. I'm sorry, they're big. You know what they say about big hands. Family show! <laughs> you are making me shake. I'm sorry. Alright, there's that one. There's a tool I love for when you have to get really close to the wire. Boop. Okay. Is that right. supposed to go there? Yeah, probably. Seems like a good enough spot. I need to drill a little hole to fish this thing through. But now's the moment of truth. I've wired everything. If you look at all my pretty little solder joints. Yeah. We're about to plug this into the wall, and hopefully it all works. So here we go, three, two, one. Woo! It's so pretty. <gasps> yeah. Close up of Zach. Fight, 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 fight. This puts me in a fighting mood. So I've been using some hazard tape that I've wrapped around my arena pan, or sorry, my arena frame. And this just gives the outside of the arena the appearance of danger. Of danger. This isn't wood, it's a magical battlefield. Of hazardous material. Where legends are made. Or destroyed. And champions are defeated. All right. So we've put down a layer of bulletproof glass provided from our friends at Tap Plastics. And we're going to put in the poster that Bunny made for us. Now we're doing two layers of bulletproof glass so we can sandwich art between it. Because this would work as a floor right now, but this 
would work as a better floor. Ooh. Bunny, thank you so much for this amazing artwork. Something so satisfying about that. Indeed. Feel faster. This task really has a lot of appeal. Oh. All right. So I'll explain one of these. Here's our little corner piece. Here's the steel part. You get a little bit of this hazard tape. Cut it off with the scissors. Peel the backing. And what we're going to do is we're going to press the spikes through it, which is a little bit of a painful process. But I find it's a lot easier. Start taut, get it going. You can use a screwdriver to help press it through. But real fast, you have yourselves some genuine hazard spikes. And then the last touch is put some double stick tape on the back. Just like that, you have four hazards for your arena. All right, everybody. So I'm going to my next corner. And what's important to use this table for is to make sure everything's flat and level. So I got my little spike strip. I'm gonna put in my glass piece. And what I'm doing is there's Lexan on the inside and colored acrylic on the outside. So I'm just going ahead and sticking this on the side, dropping on my little onyx part to help hold it in place. Make sure it's all taut. I went ahead and set up a second drill so I can so I don't have to constantly switch the bits back and forth. Uh-oh, that wall got screwed. <laughs> You might notice I'm using my acrylic drill right now, and this is a very special drill that has a certain point to not crack acrylic as it drills it. Um, I'm not just running the self. You might notice I just run this into the wood when it's the wood and plastic all by itself. But when I have an acrylic sheet in here, I make sure to drill it with the acrylic drill first because the self-tapping screws would crack and shatter the acrylic. That's bad. That would be bad. Is it level? Almost. What about now? Ah, you seated. cheated. No, I seated. <laughs> is that a goalpost? So this is the pit area, signified by being very pity. But it looks like a goalpost. Well, yeah, there. Now it's a goalpost. Wee! Um. And I tried to have this, since a lot of robots would be impacting it, I made it a little tighter than the others. And I'm still trying to figure out the best way to stick it all on here. With glue? Well, no. I, it's tight, so I don't need glue. Tape, then? Hammer. But you said stick. <laughs> Okay. Like a glove. Like a glove. So you have to put this on in three different sections? Yes. Oh. Next. Oh, wow. That one's much easier than its brother. Drill it. Yeah, drill it. Screw. And last but not least, we put in the plank. The plank. Yarmy mateys. Make them walk the plank. Hoist the sails oh, on the yeah. starboard side. Yar ha 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 ha. Right, Matt? Yes. 
Somebody get cracking on the phone. We need a pirate quote. Get cracking. All right, make sure we're lined up to the middle line. Tappity tappity. I feel like that's more of a bang and less of a tap. Just battle testing. It's okay. She'll love me in the morning. Will she though? <laughs> Will she? We'll find out. Next week on Scorpio Builder Blog. I'm here with my brand new arena and I wanted to show you the final option. Sometimes we do events in bars and it's really, really dark. And so I got these light bars uh, at Home Depot. And if you look real close, there's a spot to slide in the piece. So now we have lighting for the arena. This is the final touch to finish this arena is just slide in the four rechargeable light bars. And now, the arena is complete. raids here in the Bob Mass Arena. Oh no! They get pushed into the out area. <laughs> Baby bunny! Baby bunny! <laughs> hey! Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever Spider-Man does. Does he fly? Yes he can. With his webs, because he is Spider-Man. <laughs>